Welcome to Tukey Sidebar, a book club for the professionally online. I'm David. I'm Gabe, Ursula Gwynn's biggest schooner. And I'm Cap, and Gabe stole my line this time. <laughs> <laughs> today we're we're back again with several random topics. We're doing a we're doing a mix we're doing a, a, a Dave Cap and Gabe's grab bag. Yes, uh, it's a group grab bag. Everybody gets a pinch. You have to grab before you tug. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing a bit of a different format. Um, in the interest of, of favoring the our algorithm overlord, we're breaking this episode in a few different shorts for YouTube. We're going to upload it as just one episode on Spotify and uh, Apple, iTunes, whatever, Apple Video, wherever you find it. Um, please vote us up there. By the way, if you subscribe, please just, you know, click, click the little five star button. Doesn't, doesn't take but a minute, you know, you know go ahead and remove that pesky ad block while you're at it. <laughs> and, and, and you're, you're really earning the name Harad, you know, 300 <laughs> subs and you already got it to your head. Oh brothers, we're, we're growing. Um, so yeah, huge, hugely appreciate if you could do that. Um, and today, you know, we're, we're rather than covering a single book. We have um, My Confessions Part 2 coming out very soon. Uh, but we're doing a couple of topics that are related to the kind of things we do, books, culture, kind of like dissident lit. And um, before we dive into those, we have an uh, announcement to make. We, we've uh, officially taken the Peterson route, gentlemen. You can now give us money. There's a way. Oh, I thought I thought we were washing our penises. <laughs> Never. <laughs> I'm currently wearing a five piece color, various colored suit. And I now am the proud, uh, you know, administrator. I need to give you guys admin privileges. But to our subscribe star and Patreon, if you guys, uh, for, if anyone's interested, uh, we just set those up earlier this week. No expectation. If you enjoy this, we we love doing this. We're, we plan to keep doing it. But if you you know if you're willing to give us support, we hugely appreciate it. We'll you know eventually once we hit a certain benchmark, where our plan is to increase our frequency of uploads. Um, get a get, there's an editor who very kindly one of our guys offered for a very reasonable price to do some editing for us to get more stuff out. So we're kind of working up to that goal. Everything every dollar we get is basically just going into the podcast at this point yep. three tiers uh, summarize uh do you guys want to do you guys want to recap it or i can well there's the little tugger which is is basically kind of like the cut chair option if you donate like a dollar <laughs> or more we still appreciate you <laughs> yeah, the cut chair. yeah you, you 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 get to voyeuristically enjoy from the sidelines while the big tuggers you know get their books reviewed because if you're a top tugger you can recommend any book you want and we'll review it well if you're if you're a top tugger for three months, you can cover you can request a book or topic and uh, and and we will cover it. It might not be a full episode length, probably going to be a mini sode, uh, but it definitely could expand, uh, especially considering one of our uh, members' tendency to go off uh, when he's really into <laughs> something. Gabe, <laughs> uh, yeah, I wonder who that could be. And the $5, I, I think you guys are selling short with the $5 editorial board member. You become a Tukey editorial board member, you get to vote on upcoming topics we do. So, you know, we're going to infrequently put out, sorry, <laughs> not infrequently. We're going to occasionally put out uh, polls to decide what, what we're going to cover next. So it's a really easy way to both support us and uh, get a chance to control what, uh, you know, what kind, of, what kind of things we cover, have a little bit of creative control on it. And, um, yeah, and just support your boys. Again, no pressure. If you if you got if you got bills to pay, please do not sweat this. We will be here. Uh, we're here to, you know, serve the cause, support the boys. But anything you you're willing to contribute helps really justify our time and and energy. So extremely appreciated. Well, one is there a difference between occasionally and infrequently? By the way, is there a substantive difference between those two statements? Yeah, the impl the implication. I know you're an ESL, but the implication is that <laughs> infrequently uh, is is less frequent than occasionally. Occasionally is probably at least four times a year. Infrequently is like twice a year. <laughs> also, we're gonna put yeah. a poll four times a year. <laughs> also, as far as the polls go, yeah, as far as the polls go, it will help us prioritize because we do have a backlog of projects that we are considering that we want to do yeah 
Um, and, uh, you know, it, it will, it will help us, uh, help us make those decisions on prioritizing because we can only cover so much in a certain time period. Literally three magazines in the last 48 hours that we want to cover. And it's like, which like, and it's just so hard with magazines because short stories. So yeah. short stories take longer per page than a book. And so it's like, what do we do? Yeah, and also and uh, another side note, I love the fact you included the edging as a top tucker. You had to edge for three months <laughs> because y'all know I'll probably, I probably I would make an alt account and just to sub edge. And sub just, oh my god, you're just gonna yeah. do it so that you get to cover one of your terrible <laughs> suggestions. <laughs> Yes, yes. I was going to game the system, so I'm glad you put some anti-game software by going to edging the requirement. So eventually, we're also uh, planning on offering uh, early access to anything we produce uh, to subscribers, of course. And of course, you, uh, any uh, top tugger who you donate a hundred dollars or more, you will get a fifty percent discount on my OnlyFans. By the way, where we're trying to get into like the art ho dime square market. So I I'm planning I am sadly the Dasha of this group so I will sexualize myself for views. <laughs> you know, of course he hasn't he I'll hasn't doxed after... himself yet so uh you know uh, well, it, it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be completely blank for a while. <laughs> No, it's going to be, no, no. You know what I'm going to do? It's going to be like just from the neck down. Let the face be imagination, you know. Mm, it's so yeah. much worse than you can possibly imagine. <laughs> it's really love, Lovecrafty Should and pornography that you're producing. <laughs> it can't be described yeah. or perceived directly. Only, only implied. Only, only derived so from I... other horrifying information. Yeah, my my body has a very non Euclidean shape to it. <laughs> it's like a half rotted jack o' lantern. <laughs> Imagine the smell. <laughs> Actually, rotting pumpkin just smells a lot like pumpkin. It's not that bad. Yeah, she yeah, smells pretty good. good to be I kind of like the yeah. smell of old pumpkin. Yeah, like at the end of uh, October, you kind of get that like su- kind of sickly sweet. Yeah, it's pretty pleasant. But anyway, thanks, thanks for the gold, kind, <laughs> kind uh, YouTube viewer. If you're so inclined, um, and we will chill. You know, we'll just we'll probably mention this just every episode for about thirty minutes. <laughs> Um, at the start from now on and and hopefully we get a few few bucks. This is what this is what um, keeps I, us from trying to sell you over overpriced uh breakfast cereals in boxes that are smaller wait, than Wait, 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 what? Yeah. Wait, no, I was just about to do a, a cut out to Raid Shadow Legends, our, our little ad sponsor. No, 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 we didn't have to. We didn't have to. No, no, because of because of oh. the kind subscribe star and and uh and Patreon supporters. Uh, we don't have to sell our booty holes uh, to Nordman. Oh, well, you should have told me before I wrote signed the damn contract, motherfucker. Well, sorry, sorry, your your booty hole is forfeit. It's good. You can put it. You can Each put it on your OnlyFans. Is, uh, uh, still up for grabs. We used to have standards. We used to have dignity, man. You used to be punk rock. We do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I didn't sell out. I bought in. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, so this so this week we're covering the latest uh, young adult uh, fantasy fiction from a brown woman. Uh, just what you all tuned in for. <laughs> yes, first female in the pod, actually. Uh, it, hey, what the fuck are you talking no, about? No, no, it's a. Uh, uh, I, I was I was kidding. I was I was saying we were gonna. We're now sponsored by Simon and Schuster. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh, oh. Now, okay. We're now yeah, sponsored yeah, okay. by Sorry, Simon and the... Schuster. We're covering uh, the hottest new TikToks. Yeah, sensation. we're we're covering book talk only. Uh, it's nothing but it's nothing <laughs> but but bitches reading fantasy about werewolves fucking them. So, and, and yeah. to be clear, we're, we're rating the girls in the thumbnails, not the books they're covering. <laughs> Actually, no joke. That's kind of what our first topic relates to is, uh, you know, the market demand. You know, this is actually kind of uh, serendipitous. The market demand versus the user thing. Because I feel like we serve a hyper-specific niche. Niche? Niche? Niche. Niche. (laughs) We serve a a hyper-specific niche niche within um, the the world. (laughs) Yes. Uh, the Spenglerian, Nishian, Ubermenschian, Nish, Nish. I cannot say that right tonight. Anyway, and and so that's why it's so important to support us. But anyway, moving on. 
So our first our first topic to cover tonight is a a bit of a follow on uh, to a, to a certain episode we had discussing friend of the show Mark Dawson. Uh your your everyone's friend Old Davy here made a certain what I felt at the time was a throwaway comment, and the throwaway comment was this: it's it's ex- accepted wisdom within the writing community that putting out about one full length novel of 60 to 100,000 words per year is a sort of standard, somewhat aggressive uh, pace for writing out. Source, source. Can I get a source? Do you have a reference to that? Do you have a source? (laughs) Brandon Sanderson's podcast. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I said it. So in, in, in the writing world of people who write and have no lives, there's a discourse about how many words per day that you put out. And as a loser, I, I somewhat follow this and, um, yeah, listen to what people are saying. And early on, as I was just kind of dabbling into writing after my, as I was trying to adjust after my crypto addiction, um, gambling addiction, um, as my outlet of writing, I was like, you know, what's normal to write. And some, a lot of the things I heard and what I found myself as I got a bit of experience is 500 to a thousand words per day when you write is like a very or within like an hour, sorry, 500, 2000 words per hour of writing. And typically getting me two hours of creative writing in a day is, is, you know, pretty normal. And then you kind of get a little bit of worn out in your creative muscles. Um, obviously a lot of other things to do rather than just when I say writing, I'm talking about drafting, you know, throwing words on a page. So that is my context going into making that said statement which unbeknownst to me was perhaps the most provocative statement in the Tukey's mag history. You know, it wasn't any of the racial epitaphs. It was not any of the uh, various euphemisms for sable that were thrown around. Well, um, y'all did get caught for ball shaming. Y'all did ball shame a little bit. It's yeah, true. We did ball shame. And- it's, it's, it's no shame to be bald. It's a shame to fight the acknowledgement of being bald. <laughs> <laughs> just shave it. Just pick it. Yeah. Gillette it even. Or just keep it short. Yeah. Keep keep it short and just do this short stanza. But w- wicking it up with like with a gel is just not solving it's, the problem. You're not it's volumizing. It. You're just drawing attention to the problem. You look like a pale cactus. <laughs> but it does make for a great thumbnail. It sure does. Likeness rights. Yeah. Friend of the show, Mark Dawson, in, in the commentary, is someone who was certainly not Mark Dawson. I just want to read just one of the many comments because we got quite a few replies to this video, more than usual for a li- you know, little old crew like us. I just want to read aloud two specific ones. I'm not going to name the person who was certainly not Mark Dawson, who said that, um, who said, who said the following, some indie authors publish 12 to 20 books a year. All right, so let's just quick math on that. That's a book or two per month. What's the capacity of a modern uh, crematorium? <laughs> I'm not doing cookie <laughs> cookie math here. And then the second part is when, when press, yours truly, David, I said the following. Brandon Sanderson, Stephen King, full-time prolific writers with editors, cover designers, marketing logistics staff on standby, generally put out two to four novels a year. King Sanderson, <clears throat> sorry, pardon me, King Sanderson. And my question was, you know, how many, how do you think indie authors are capable of publishing 12 to 20 books a year? For argument's sake, let's say that's 15 books a year. That's a new book published every 24 days. That's a more than a book per month. Presumably they ha- also get freelance support, do background work themselves. How many hours a day conceivably could they spend writing each book at that point? And then the follow on to that, Again, I would just love to hear you guys' response to this one comment, not naming the person. <laughs> <laughs> the ones I know, lots are ex-military, probably Navy SEALs. That's my speculation, David's speculation. Have excellent self-discipline. Lots dictate. This seems to be the way they write so much. They have editors, etc. I know one author who wrote 29 books in 2023. I won't tell you because you'll probably do a YouTube video dissing them. All right, I'll leave it there. I won't read any more. So true. Or... Twenty nine so books. To... <laughs> uh... Yeah, was the commentator was his name Nark Lawson by any chance? 
Or, or was it Dawson Groiper fourteen? <laughs> it's almost. It, it's just. It's all, two, almost two and a half books a month. Is uh, a lot. I mean, yeah, it's a lot. I mean, th- they have got to be novellas just from just in terms of your possible ability to put things out. Um, this sounds awfully like book publishing to now to me. It's just. Uh, <laughs> Working, working f- full days, doing nothing else. Publish twenty nine books a year. Like, uh, okay, okay. You know what? The math doesn't add up. That much glue. You know the smokestacks. You know why? Were they using a wooden door as they published? Yeah. Are these like? <laughs> they were are these like notes? Kindle Direct formulaic? Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, banged by an alien uh, books. Oh, I, I, that's exactly my point is like what defines a book in this situation, right? It's like, what's the length? And some of them are good length. Like I, another friend of the show, Mark Partlow commented and said, he's written um, 60 books in seven years, average of 85 K words. Thank you. Friend of the show, Rick for commenting. And um, you know, it's just it, part of it is like, is, is what defines a book at this point And what defines a writer? Like that, that's the huge like qualitative difference in in this weird output discourse. So when someone says I'm a writer, or I write, how many people are actually writing full time, right? And like what is the expectation for that? Like very few people have the luxury of writing full time. Or if if you're wealthy enough to have that luxury, you would choose to punish yourself in such a way <laughs> to try and make a living writing full time fiction. And a key word being luxury, because you know they're not making that much money off it. Mm-hmm. And so I guess that's the first category of like defining it. And so I struggle with this topic. And the reason I bring it up is because there's that. And then there's also like the, I don't say quality, but the type of writing. Like, is it pulp? Is it literary? And these are very amorphous terms. And there's a lot of like wiggle room in between. But like kind of writing are you putting out? I think that's a kind of an unspoken part of this. And part of what I find a little stifling about the indie writer community is like you go in and actually shout out another like unironic friend of the show, um, David Stewart. He's actually not, he's, he's really, he's a, he's a guy who, who, who I respect. He's a writer. And he, he has this comment about, he, he went in the indie writing community and, you know, he thought he would find other people who are like creative looking to write the newest, uniquest, weird new thing. But instead you find like it's the most mechanized process, like how do I output five of the current trending werewolf romance, now it's vampire, sex slave, now it's this whatever weird niche subgenre and hit it as hard as possible. And I, yeah, he, and, he wrote and a good essay on that model. called like to the algorithm gods where I, a lot of these female romance authors like they choose the best topping trends on the amazon algorithm oh then they pay amazon extra so perfect example of this david your recently published uh, novella in providence was for a while in the top 50 colonization fiction um mm, uh, books on like, amazon uh, Samuel chamberlain but What's on <laughs> the other things in colonization fiction are all uh, they're all books by either uh, let's see I'm looking it up right now Honey Phillips totally a real name or Ruby Dixon also totally a real name <laughs> that are uh, all uh, genres that contain all of Ruby's stuff contains the word barbarian. And has a giant hulking man in a who is like blue or purple or green, um, ice planet yeah, barbarians at, lady. At, that's and then, her. Yes, ice planet barbarians. That's correct. Uh, she, we she's, take a she's got about week. thirty other books about uh, about barbarians, um, or Honey Phillips, which has a uh, similarly prolific amount of. Uh, of books about how the alien uh, 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 of a series called how the aliens were one. Um, and it's a different, uh, a different lovely lady posing next to a buff alien man, 
who basically just looks like yeah, I mean it's about as creative as far as aliens go as like Star Trek where it's just a human with like one extra thing <laughs> glued on and yeah. painted a different color in some cases not even that actually but yeah um <clears throat> so that that's what you were competing with you were competing with uh with uh two uh I I mean this is not these are would not fit my definition of a re of a you know quote fingers here a real book not a real book it's it's just it's pornography <laughs> like <laughs> so mm. um yeah yeah listen they write pornography david writes erotic. oh my god right. hold on hold on if so if i scroll classy. down if i scroll down a little actually there's there's the <laughs> i married a blank uh from regine abel which is <laughs> can you send me screenshots uh, by you the just way? look this I up on amazon and colonization fiction just saying but um <laughs> which uh i'm sorry i'm sorry david Impro Im improvidence is no longer ranked um there were probably yeah. some no. very sexually frustrated women who read that and realized that they could not fap to that um <laughs> oh, they got jealous they got jealous of the sexy cloned redheads right um, oh, also, uh, yeah, I married a Naga and I married a lizard man uh, from the Prime Mating Agency series. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, well, isn't I married a Naga? Isn't that the biography of Thomas Jefferson, if I remember correctly? <laughs> Damn, <Whoa. Baze. laughs> Leather Apron Club, get in here. <laughs> Come with, respond to this guy. Uh, more like more right. like my brother's weird fetish uh, made people retroactively uh, call me out. Genetically blame yeah. me. I, I want to just Cuts point to out the grave. We are we are not genre snobs here. Like we we're like I feel like we're some of the most uh, omnivorous readers. That like you two guys in particular. Like I thought I feel like I always feel like I was kind of a weirdo because I would like read all sorts right. of stuff. But you guys I feel like are even more read and read more weird stuff than I do. So it, it's not so much. It's not that we hate pulpy stuff or even erotica. Like I get it, women read erotica, and that's a thing. It's it's the formulaicness of it, and 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 the apples to oranges comparison of like you have to be writing this amount without acknowledging like the type of thing that's being written and questioning the value of writing it and then just advertising it heavily. Again, this is a bit of following the whole the whole Dawson the concern over his methodology that he was advertising and the damage that it causes to the, the whole writing scene where you have these people just, they're concerned with the creator side exclusively and they're not worried about the buyer side and the kind of environment that they're creating of whether they're actually creating something that's like of, of value and as valuable as possible to the quote unquote, not the quote unquote, the literal to the culture rather than to their economic short-term value value that they get from it and um i just see there's a fundamental mismatch and this discourse emphasizes it because it's so focused on the writer side like most readers would never stumble across this at all but you see a lot in writing circles about hitting your word count and getting getting your output to a certain level there's, there's a kind of a peer pressure element to it i mean it's it's also breeding like a really shit kind of reader i mean I, I don't know this is the the good reads how many books are you going to read this year does this count as a book right like can i can i count you know reading my proof reading my child's three-page essay towards my good reads like yeah. it's why why does the, the quantity of books clearly does not fucking matter and Listen, and, I have you know my mom did that. Thank you very much. Great, great. She she's also she's also <laughs> ghostwriter in all of yeah. your comments. You've got a you've got an earpiece <laughs> in. You're getting past lines from your uh, uh, from your madre and uh, and your yeah, ab and your abuela <laughs> are passing you are passing you words. I am the long house. Yes. Just an avatar of it. But yeah, it, it's it's uh this this weird um it, it it's just a fucking stupid metric, right? It might take you a year to I mean, say you wanted to read Proust, you know, you're not going to read you're not going to read 
any portion of In Search of Lost Time in the same amount of time as you would read, you know, someone's 50 page how Predator from the Predator was a sexual predator and I liked it. You know, mm. you're not going to read that <laughs> in the same amount of time. Um, but uh, one, one counts for my Goodreads one, as, as one book and one counts as one book. So obviously I'm just going to read the bullshit. It, it's, mm. it, it's, a frustra- it's a frustrating way to look at things that I, I can't get behind. Um, and I think it's all very, um, I think it's a very similar attitude as the get your word count. It doesn't matter how good it is. Just put out some shit. Well, on that point, on a serious point, I think the reason why it offends us and why we have a, a distinct revulsion against this kind of thing is that is profane in a lot of ways we're these we're agnostic overall but at the end of the day for us literature is sacred there's an element of something that is sacred and there is some it is art as fashion as in a sacred practice like these guys who write 10 books a year 100 books a, some guys claim a ridiculous amount of books a year by the by you know who openly admit to using ghost writers there's something deeply crash and like very petite bourgeois about it it's purely for ego. It's purely like well, these guys, they commit so much to making this somewhat successful. It's like the boomer version of drop shipping. If you notice, like all these guys are over the age of 40, right? While the Zoomers are too busy drop shipping, like buying shit from Chinese Amazon to sell slightly cheaper on like American Amazon. The boomers, for the sake of ego, like, oh, I wrote 10 books this year. I wrote 20 books this year. They will game the system. And it's like, honestly, it's kind of, you know, it's like the literature version of a, of a tranny, to be honest with you. Like, hey, I'm a real author. I'm a real book. You know, it's like, no, no, you're not. You'll never be a real writer. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> thousands okay. of years of being blessed by the muses have to Episode to title. <laughs> Nicely done. You, <laughs> you'll never, you'll be, never a be a author. real author. <laughs> the, the, yeah, also, yeah, if you have a ghostwriter or you have a... A, a writing assistant you did not write that sorry yeah sorry J- james patterson sorry tom clancy's fucking ghost like, <laughs> like <laughs> did not write that you know it's like oh yeah listen Na- the, now the it's, only it's just a guy brand. Got... Well, it's so yeah. stupid yeah the only guy yeah. who got away with that was shakespeare when he had the earl of oxford write all his plays there's a <laughs> I guess I, I unless you guys have anything else on it I guess I, I'd like to end with a, a quote um, that I think kind of frames this ties into the greater like the tropification of fiction I think it's a whole nother topic to cover another another time um, but it feeds into this marketing um, pressure on a, an art form and the way it bends it I want to read a quote from a true friend of the show Michael Lindsay his most recent essay against designer religion. And he has a, a, a quote that I, I especially enjoyed a little, little German here for you, Gabe <coughs> Gestell or just, I almost say it was Gestell in framing is, is what that means, which transforms the stuff of the world into Bostand, the standing reserve in the eyes of man. The world itself is revealed as this stockpile of resources where once it was imbued with soul and meaning, Heidegger's key example is the damming of the Rhine, a river so full of sacrality in the mythology of the German people, illustrates the spiritual consequences of this process, perversely in wanting to claw back the material upshots of a lost spiritual condition. I think that I think that applies to to fiction in this, and I'll just I'll leave that there for now uh, in this context of in being so perfectly marketed captured and um data a, sort of a data-driven death of an art form that it becomes this tropified mess of people applying these ma- mass maximum speed mass market ma- you know multi sort of corporate produced with many people um involved to produce a, a product that no one will remember in you know in 30 days it'll hit it'll hit top top 20 in in colonization subgenre for you know porn- pornographic topics 
but it doesn't have staying power. And again, fine. I, nothing against pulp and the least, but it, yeah, just, just people pr- promoting this as the way to make a living and to produce it. That's my concern. And I, I have nothing against people that produce and try to make, make a dollar in by, by writing books. I think you just need to acknowledge the, the kind of writing you're doing and the kind of master you're serving with it. And um, I guess I'll leave, I'll leave it on that slightly salty, salty note. It's a good note to end on, but I would actually say it's kind of disrespectful to pulp because he knows pulp does like it does like cater to the base desires, right? You know, sex, murder, all these base desires, but they're still done by men. They're still done individually based on the old mm-hmm. school way. Like, you know, you're paid by the letter, so you you feel, feel a lot of purple prose. You know, but this is a managerialized version of it's mass pulp. It's like cocaine pulp, right? It's over the counter pulp. You know, if it's very much, you know, here's a here's a little bottle. Here's what we, we you know, we got 1000 focus groups to prove it. It's ba- it's approved by the Lord of the Algorithm. You know, so it's the it's pulp. It's the worst kind of pulp. It's the pulp it, like with all the human aspects of a pulp retracted away from it. It's like the cat It's committee pulp. It's like pulp by committee yeah. rather than like how Howard who's some weirdo with erectile dysfunction living in Texas who lived with his mom writing insane shit. And sending it in to some guy in Massachusetts or whatever who is yeah. publishing it. Um, this is this is yeah somehow approved by the mass consensus of cat ladies on Goodreads and <laughs> and, and their their overlords. It's, they got yeah, they got to flick totally the bean somehow, dynamic. my guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, for, and, you know, and for and for once, I'm not going to reference German authors. I'll reference two French authors. You know, Balgiard and Renard Camus. You know, it's both the simulacrum where we have so much content uh, that it basically generates itself. We, we we've invented the literature version of the self licking ice cream cone. It's a it's a mix of the simulacrum idea and Renard Camus' idea of Fordism, based that on Henry not, Ford. Not his first does... name. Ooh. Albert Camus' first name. No, no, no! I'm not talking about that Camus. I'm talking about Renard Camus, like uh, the dissident author in France. Oh, um, uh, he coined oh. the you know the big replacement. Uh, he know, sure did. Hey, text. I was I was retarded. There we go. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. See, you're a poser. I, I, no, I've never you're, read you're him. You're the white girl in the band. T-shirt. I've never read him. Yeah. Yep. Name three. Yeah. Name you know, three. He just songs. he just got translated. <laughs> <laughs> name th- name three racist Frenchmen. <laughs> but uh. <laughs> But now the idea of Henry Fordism, where, you know, the idea of every piece is interchangeable, so it makes the, you know, conveyor belt more easy to run. Like, that's, this is, this kind of literature is that in a digital format. It's a self-flicking ice cream cone that all it knows how to do is constantly generate itself. Where the author, a lot of these people, you realize a lot of these people are now making AI generated books. Like they have ChatGPT just make gibberish and sell it on Amazon. At this point, it literally is just a, a factory of self flicking ice cream cones. Yo, isn't I Married a Naga? Isn't that the biography of Thomas Jefferson, if I remember correctly?